Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Um, is everyone able to hear me? Um, sound good? Is everybody good with sound? Are you able to hear me? Awesome. Hello, Michelle. Hello, Renee. Welcome to the Simply Biz webinar. Um, my name is Odette van der Haar. And um, hello, Janet. I am from a company called Exponential. It is my company. I am an entrepreneur. Hello, Luther. And um, I'll be taking you through, um, you know, a couple of tips for small businesses, for entrepreneurs. You know, a lot of the time, small businesses um, start out small, but they have a big future and they don't know how to take their business into a growth space and to grow it from success to success. So hopefully today, some of my tips are going to be um, sufficient to, to, to give you some insights into how to use um, little tools in your business in order to, to make it work. There is one rule, however, and that it is a dialogue, not a monologue. I'm talking to a computer screen and there's nothing worse than talking to a computer screen looking at myself. I can't see you, but you guys can see me. But I can see all of your comments in the chat boxes, right? So send me your questions. And as we go along, I will try to answer every question as best as I can. And for you to get the best out of this webinar, it's really great to give me some context with regards to your own business or your own personal experience so that we can make it um, relevant to you and to your business and um, a bit more specific than generic, okay? This is an open platform and really and truly, my time is your time. I hate PowerPoint. It's like death by PowerPoint, but I do have a couple of slides for good reason because it unpacks the principles that I'm going to be talking about. Um, but yeah, like I said, keep those questions coming through the chat box. Um, I'll be checking those periodically and um, I hope to answer your questions specifically um, to give you the best out of this 30 minutes um, these 30 minutes that uh, you can possibly get. So first things first, everybody asks me um, as an entrepreneur or as a business owner, how do I identify what my customers need, right? So what is a customer need? How do I know if I'm serving my customers well or if I'm um, meeting their needs? And the very simple answer to what a customer need is, is that it really is the unlocking of a solution to a problem. So a need arises from a problem. And if you eliminate the problem through the service or product that you are providing, you've identified a need. You also identify what is called a niche. So in other words, a group of people who have the same problem for which your solution is um, a fix. And that then becomes your basic target audience or your basic customer base. Um, and those are the people whom you need to be talking to um, most. So when you start turning problems into solutions, there are a couple of must knows. Consumers are sensitive, particularly during this current economic climate with regards to pricing, with regards to quality. They want to feel that they have a choice and they certainly want to feel that they are, um, that, that accessing the product is convenient. So when you are talking to a consumer, you are essentially trying to do two things, building what I call mental availability on the one side and physical availability on the other side. What is mental availability? Mental availability is to have top of mind awareness of your product as a solution to a problem, right? And then physical availability, this is where pricing becomes very important because it must be accessible pricing, affordable pricing for those consumers or those customers. And there must be an element of convenience. It must be easy to, to access the product or the solution to the customer's problem, right? Most importantly, consumers want to feel like they have an element of choice. They want to be empowered to feel like they have a choice, not that something is being forced down their throats. Um, and a lot of companies get this wrong because a lot of companies like to shout at consumers, like to force things down consumers' throats. And I promise you, it's not going to work. 
the golden rule of business, any business, large or small, do not overpromise and underdeliver. O P U D, OPAD. Okay? Do not say you're going to do something or say that your product does something and then it doesn't. That's the worst thing you can do for your business. That's the worst thing you can do for your brand. That's the worst thing you can do, especially in an era where we have social media. All it takes is for one unhappy consumer who feels disappointed, who feels like they've been shortchanged, to go onto social media and pop out a tweet about their expectations that are, are underwhelmed um, or their feelings of being underwhelmed by what your, um, your product has, has, has delivered or worse, the service that they've received when trying to access your product or trying to contact you for assistance, for support, post-purchase, all right? All you need, one of those for your brand to be totally destroyed. And as a small business, you cannot, cannot afford to have that kind of negative social publicity in an era where social media becomes like an unstoppable fire um, when you do something to upset a consumer. Everybody will suddenly jump onto the bandwagon and your competitors, I assure you, will take every opportunity to, um, to gain uh, market share and to gain the consumer's confidence when they see you taking a beating. Why? The consumer, do we say don't overpromise and underdeliver? is not a moron. She's your wife. David, David Ogilvy said that. Um, I often say to people, when we are trying to um, determine who the target audience for anything is, I say to them, let's just unpack practically what this person is like. Everybody knows somebody who is a consumer for something. If you know, like, if you're selling a car, you say, well, who do I know that would buy this car? Oh, let's just say it would be Anne. What's Anne's personality like? What's Anne's likelihood of looking at this ad? And then you start making it relevant to the person that you know. Chances are it's going to be relevant to that target audience, right? When you start looking at products outside of your sphere, your competitors' products, you need to look at people who would potentially, that you know, who would potentially buy your competitors' competitors' products. Find the gaps and ask yourself, what can you do to outsmart your competitors? Knowing full well how that consumer would, um, who is your friend, who is your sister, brother, mother, auntie, grandmother, maybe even yourself. How would you respond to the product, to the advertising, to the messaging, to the service that you've received, right? And when you understand that, make sure that you outmaneuver your competitors by bettering what they're doing, by delivering more value, by um, delivering better service. You know, in this life that we find ourselves in, we are faced with a whole lot of abnormals. And what keeps consumers coming back all the time is experience. Experience, experience, experience. Did I have a great experience or was I treated like a moron? There's a particular store, I'll give you an example, that I went into one day. Um, I wasn't particularly dressed nicely. I was in, you know, sneakers and track pants. And I walked into the store. It was a very upmarket store um, to inquire about the cost of something. And um, they didn't take me seriously. Nobody would come and help me. I was asking for assistance and asking for assistance, and nobody would come and help me. As a result, um, I was even asked if I knew that the store, it was a jewelry store, that the store sold only real gold. I mean, of course, it's a jeweler. I would expect that they sell real gold, right? Um, and as a result, that store will never see me, even if they have a crazy sale. And I am, trust me, guys, I'm, I'm like a lover of all things jewelry, right? And bling. Even if they're ready to give something away for free, I won't go to that store. Because of the way I was treated, it left me with a bad experience, a bad taste in my mouth. It doesn't matter what they offer me, I'm not going back. Why? I am not a moron. My cash is as good as anybody else's cash. And that's how the consumer responds to experience, responds to service, 
responds to promises that you give the consumer, right? Um, and yeah, you need to be mindful of that. Rene, I see your question. I'll get to you in one sec about your web design company. So what about social media? Everybody asks, how do I use social media as a small business? How do I use social media to compete against companies who've got big budgets? And my thing is be smart, okay? If you know that big companies are spending hundreds of thousands of rands, if not millions, on social media sponsored advertising, start with the basics, something like WhatsApp. I know it sounds very underwhelming, but it is very powerful. When you create a circle of customers on a WhatsApp group, who then endorse your product and tell their friends you have a very powerful mean, um, means of getting the word out. It is the best way to gain um, reputation, to gain um, the validation, to gain a quick growth and, and, and of awareness amongst people because people believe other people who've tried your product. People believe and would trust something that somebody else has experienced first, right? And WhatsApp is an excellent way because it's very personal and it comes into your space as a consumer. Um, WhatsApp is a great means of getting that personal endorsement from a number of people. You build uh, brand awareness. You increase your customer base that way and you can connect with your customers, particularly current customers, because it costs 10 times more to acquire a new customer than it does to retain an existing customer in a relevant and meaningful way. Once you've got that sorted, then you can start putting things like pages onto social media platforms to start stimulating likes and sharing and engagement. Okay, so Renee is saying, that um, she's a web design company and there's so many companies offering similar products at much lower prices than herself, right? She says she can't match their prices and she needs to still stay in business. She says she knows that her product is um, much better and customers always seem to be drawn to the product with a lower price. Unfortunately, Renee, as you would have remembered earlier on, um, you will see that pricing is a, is a massively sensitive topic right now because of the current economic climate. I would start by getting your existing customers to give you either a written testimonial or a little voxy or something that you can share with customers that when you send out a proposal, you send that endorsement or that testimonial with whatever it is when, um, that you're quoting on um, and presenting to a customer. That way, um, you create that experience um, through the testimonial. Michelle says she's not getting much feedback from broadcasts via WhatsApp. How else can she engage with um, people other than uh, WhatsApp on other forms of social media? So, Michelle, my first question to you is, have you started a database with your WhatsApps? Have you looked at how long the WhatsApps are? You need to be able to, um, to, to say what you are saying in a WhatsApp message very quickly. There's nothing more off-putting than advertising via WhatsApp, and I receive quite a bit of it because I like to keep um, up to date with, with, with what's happening. Um, and the minute I receive a WhatsApp that is paragraphs and paragraphs long, you lose me. So you remember that you've got three seconds, seconds, guys, to get somebody's attention. So those very first words on WhatsApp, you've got to get them, you've got to hook them, and you've got to keep them interested. So make sure that you write an interesting hooking piece of um, wording or copy, as we call it in our world, that will keep people wanting to read more. Um, Renee is also asking, do I need to get permission from my customers to send their marketing material via WhatsApp? You can put at the bottom of your WhatsApp message. If you would no longer like to receive these messages, please respond uh, directly to me saying stop or opt out and then you take them off the WhatsApp database because we do need to heed um, the Protection of Personal Information Act. You can send out the initial message but at the end of the message make sure with that and every other message that you send out that you give people the opportunity to opt out. Now 
Um, Renee, I, I hope I've answered your question with regards to pricing and price sensitivity, right? You need to drive through your messaging, Renee, for your company that is a little bit more expensive, the reasons why they need to buy your product and not go for a cheaper product, you know? And the best way to, to, um, to explain that is to give the testimonial, but also to highlight in your proposal, your quote, the value added benefits of working with you. So I did a pr proposal the other day for um, a brand new client as part of a pitch. And um, my first thing was, if this client is going to be spending X amount of Rand with us, um, how much value can I give the client free of charge that's not going to cripple my business, but that is going to bring some kind of equity and um, reason for doing business with us. So I tried to match for every rand that the customer was going to spend with me um, or with us, a rand in value. Now, a rand in value could be something as simple as, if you spend this money with me, I will um, place your, uh, your testimonial on my WhatsApp page. I will do reciprocal business with you. Um, I will contract with you. Um, to buy your products, for example, if it's a corporate if it's a corporate client, just look at your customer's business and see if there's an opportunity for you to do to become their customer as well as their supplier. Also, look at whether or not you are able to give added value, like your with your friends. You know, if you have any friends that have got a lot of followers on social media, for them to connect with whoever your customer is on their page to give them likes and endorsements um, so that they feel like they're getting some added value from you. You know, everybody wants engagement. Everybody wants um, a, a customer base and everybody wants testimonials. So if you can offer the client some kind of value in those areas, then you should be okay. Michelle, I can't stress enough. If you are engaging with WhatsApp, Keep it short, keep it sweet, and keep it simple. The message must be relevant and must be easy to consume within a few seconds. You know, there's nothing worse than trying to understand what somebody is saying. If you can't say it in one sentence, right, then you need to think about before you send the WhatsApp. And, and trust me, everyone can say um, what they do or what they're offering in one sentence without unpacking every nitty gritty of their business. One little sentence. And then if you want more information, contact me, right? How to get hold of you, but make that one sentence irresistible. So if somebody were to ask me, Odette, what does your company exponential do? I always say my company provides exponential value to its customers in every possible way. In everything that I do for the customer, I provide exponential value. I don't need to say in what way. I solve problems and I bring exponential value. And that's it. They then, I leave it open for people to ask me, how do I access this value? How do I access the solutions to the problems? And then this is when the, 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 the conversation and the dialogue starts. You take it offline, off the group, and you start having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with your, with your potential customer that way. Um, and then there's the business of cash flow management, right? In any business, we need to understand how to manage our cash. But in order to manage your cash, you need to be able to manage, um, to, to accurately forecast your sales, to know exactly how much money, how much product is needed for your business, right? So how do you do that? Very simply, you look at um, past sales. So you look at the data that you have on hand, if you're launching something and you don't have past sales data, look at a comparison within your space with, that you operate in, in your industry, do an industry-wide comparison, and look at current economic trends. Very simple, if you're not an economist, um, there's nothing worse than trying to understand a whole lot of economic data. Again, I say, keep it simple. What solution are you providing? And how many people do you know who would benefit from that solution, right? You know, 10 people, start there, ask them, if I sell you this, will you buy it? If they say yes, that's your data right there. 
So I'm able to get 10 leads. Out of those 10 leads, I'm probably only going to convert three to sales because if you're doing shotgun approach lead generation, so in other words, if you're just going out broadcasting, you have about a 3% chance of getting those customers to sign up or to take up your product or your, your, your service or your offering, right? So the mathematics is quite simple. Send out your message and calculate about a 3% response. And then that's where you start. Basic, basic lead generation statistics. Then go to industry bodies. Ask them, do you have any data for your space, right? Do you have any records? And sometimes the industry bodies can be quite helpful. If you can't find that information, then become a, co a customer of your competitors. Experience what they are selling. Experience the, the sales cycle and then see how you can outmaneuver your competition. Janet is asking, she says, her challenge is that people want, but with the economic situation, they're just not buying enough. People are buying. They're just being very, very cautious about what they buy. It goes right back to need versus want. If your product is a solution to a problem, it no longer becomes a want, it becomes a need because it resolves something quite fundamental in that customer's life or work or business. Therefore, they will buy. And if they don't recognize that what you have to offer is, in fact, a need and not a want, you need to better package it and present it with value add. So everybody wants some kind of added value, more bang for their buck. Um, if I may ask Janet, what is it that you are that you are selling? Um, and then maybe, perhaps we can see what it is that you know that we can do to give you some advice regarding how to get customers to buy more. Um, right, that's the end of the theory, guys. Now we get into just plain old simple chatting let's 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 engage you have my full attention and i'm here to answer your questions directly you have a good um eight minutes to ask me anything you need for your business and my brain is is yours to tap into um i'll do my best to answer your questions and to make it relevant to whatever it is that you are selling or the business that you are building I know that it's really tough times, and I know that it's very, very difficult um, for entrepreneurs during this time. But I also know that there are a number of case studies and a number of global brands, such as Disney, for example, that started during the Great Depression, all right? And that is like now, this is the, this, this is the time to start and launch something incredible, because if you weather this storm, you're there for the long haul. Okay, so Janet's um, got a shop for natural products, essential oils, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, now, natural oils, essential oils. What do you need to communicate to your customers? The benefits of the oils, right? To create um, the oils as being a solution to a problem. It's a stressful time, okay? So maybe you want something that helps you to sleep better, helps you to de-stress. Um, and that's how you package it. And then start pack, like ring fencing your existing customers. Look at their purchase patterns. See what they used to buy and see if you can add at least one additional product. So hypothetically, somebody bought a lavender oil, for example, because they wanted something calming. Add something that is also de-stressing and calming and give them some kind of bundle that is added value, but where you can still make um, uh, enough profit. Maybe not as big a profit if you sold one product, but try and move as much product off the shelf as you possibly can. Products sitting on your shelf is dead money. So try and see if you can do a two for one deal where it costs a little bit more than one product, but it costs less than buying two. And then start making sure you watch the buying patterns of your individual customers to see which specific products you can offer them so that you give them a very personalized and unique experience when they engage with you. Michelle's saying in the beauty industry, how do we make our clients decide that it's a need and not a want? In exactly the same way as Janet, there's nothing worse um, than um, 
looking, I call it looking COVID-y during COVID, right? Because if you look good, you feel good. I'm actually doing a segment on Thursday about the business of taking care of yourself. And um, it's so important that we get up during this time, even if we're working from home and we make ourselves presentable, not because um, we're arrogant, but because we want to feel good. And the way to get your customers to, um, to feel good is to talk to them about how you, you know they're feeling uncertain times. Everybody gets up and has like Zoom call after Zoom call. A lot of people get dressed from the waist up and they're in their pajamas the whole day. So they feel, why should they actually get um, dressed? But um, hey, if you don't feel good, you're not going to actually show up in a, in a positive and an energetic way. So whether it is a little bit of lipstick or whether it is doing your hair or whether it is um, anything, a little bit of makeup, a little bit of perfume, whatever it is that makes you feel good, go for it. Encourage your customers to do that so that they can show up like in a positive way. There, there really is an absolute connection between feeling, looking good, which makes you feel good, and then showing up in, in a more positive way. So I think that looking good and using beauty industry products is fundamental during this particular period of time, because how else are you going to um, feel good if you don't look good? Hmm? And trust me, everything out there is negative. The last thing you want to do is feel horrible. So Invest in a beauty product here and there and make, make yourself feel great. That's the advice I would give you, Michelle. And that's what you should be telling your customers. Does anybody else have a question? Let's have a look-see. Um, oh, Renee says she's, she's happy about adding value. She's definitely going to look at how to implement it. Great, Renee. I'm glad I was able to help you and give you something, um, something worthwhile. Is there anyone else who has a question before we wrap in three minutes? Um, this is your time. Right. So remember, if there are no more questions, price sensitivity, look for adding value to your customers, right? Quality. Customers are going to pay money for something that they feel is quality, whether it be a quality product, quality customer service, or just a quality experience when acquiring the product, okay? And make it easy and convenient for them to get the product. When you know your product lasts for five weeks or five months, make sure that in month four or week four, you contact your client and say, hey, I know that you always buy X, Y, Z, um, and I know that you're probably going to be running out shortly, can I offer you some added value if you if you take two for one? Or can I send you, so you be proactive, can I send you um, your, your, your usual purchase? What that does is make the consumer understand you know them. And there's nothing better than dealing with people who know you, who think for you, right? That's super convenient. And that's a great experience. Also try to know your consumers' names, your customers' names. Make sure that you address them by name. And make sure that you don't say dear customer when you are talking to, to them one-on-one. -on -one. Luther, um, he, Luther is saying he's learned valuable things about running promotions on WhatsApp. And he's currently trying to utilize it effectively right now. Good luck, Luther. I think um, keep it short, keep it sweet, keep it direct. And get customers hooked so that they can come back to you and ask you any questions offline. Gather their information. Put it in an Excel spreadsheet and make sure to talk to them one on one. All right. So segment your customer database into specifics. So these are existing customers. These are customers that like X. These are customers that I've engaged with and make sure that you engage with and you talk to your customers in a relevant, meaningful way, one on one that makes sense to them. I think um, that's what all customers want. Customers are not morons, guys. Remember that in your business. Don't overpromise and underdeliver, or you will get burned. And remember to be innovative in the way you communicate. Short, sweet, one sentence. And good luck. We're out of time. Thank you, everyone.